Well, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Nonprofit Renaissance Podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Colin. And I'm one of your co-hosts, H. And we are back with another super fun episode, a few episodes. We're going to do another series, actually, with an incredible guest. You've heard him before. You know him. You love him. It's the Verse uh, Principal and CEO, Justin Price. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me What's back on the pod. On? Hola, Justin. ¿Cómo estás? Mm. And estoy español, Colin, Spanish, because Justin just did a little Spanish intensive in Miami right. the last sí. couple of days. And you went there, sponsored by Duolingo, to pick up and brush up your Spanish. Is that correct? First of all, Miami just doesn't get the love it deserves. Mm. And uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Miami. I didn't I wasn't always a fan of Miami, but Miami, uh, as I've heard it referred to, Miami is that, is Will Smith your reference, Colin? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much about it, actually. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the song in the nineties. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> that's just it's really carried me through. Welcome to Miami, Bim, Bim. <laughs> Honestly, all I know of that part is just Miami. He doesn't Miami. know the other. Oh yeah. man, yeah. Yeah. Miami. Miami. Yeah. Listen, I've got mixed feelings. Lived twenty plus years out there, and. Um, but that's for another day, another episode. Because yeah. while we did Spanish, uh, we immersed ourselves hanging out with the VU crew, with the VU Yeah, why, why were you guys church. out there? Yeah, what, what were you doing? hanging out with tons of pastors. What a cool experience. Incredible. I, I will say I, I had a, a moment where I was just like, you know, we work with a lot of for-profits that um, that are doing great work. We work with a lot of nonprofits that are doing great work. We work with, you know, even people like manufacturers, Um but the fourth category of people we work with is churches. And, uh, man, what a, like, how cool that I verse got invited to a friends and family event at VU pastors assembly. So it was like us and 500 pastors <laughs> hanging out and talking about church work, um, in a way that was real to me. It was like, it was pretty raw. It was pretty authentic conversations and it just, for me, like fired me up, um, on a lot of things that we do that we talk about for churches and got to have some phenomenal conversations, which, you know, in the, the church world, this conversation around marketing, mm -hmm. you know, we've been very comfortable to brand it communications, right? Uh, yeah. church comms yeah, yeah. has been a very safe place. You try to start talking about sales and marketing in a church, like what mm. are we doing? Mm -hmm. we, we putting up some tables at the temple for Jesus to turn. Still like, taboo. Stigma for sure. Taboo for sure. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I don't know how to reconcile with everything, but I think, I think the conversations that we're having are debunking quite a few myths around marketing, and um, it's really fun. It's, I mean, it's a privilege to get to talk to pastors. First of all, I mean. Uh, you know, I have been serving the church for over two decades. Uh, I've been on staff at multiple places and I've served from outside of the staff position. And to me, there's like no greater like honor than to get to serve somebody who's like full time, just doing this day in and day out. Um, and doing this being like the hard work that is like working in a church. So I respect the conversations and the questions and quick, the challenges. Quick math, quick math. How many years? Church work, how many years? 21. 21. 23. 23. So that's 40, 44. Am I doing that? And then uh, I'd probably say about 15. Mm. So we're, 50 we're up plus? there. We're, Ooh. we are, we are we're senior citizens basically one retired, <laughs> pa well, a retired pastor who started when he was born. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and what's neat, uh, Justin, I wanted to get to the Miami scene. I want to Talk, we because we talked to thirty plus pastors while hanging there, <laughs> yeah. and sometimes answering the same question and debunking some marketing myths or, right. or, or or opportunities that are usually not front and center with ministry and with pastors or what they learn in seminary or what they get at the pastors conference. So that's a cool thing about Vu being forward thinking, mm -hmm. Rich Wilkerson Jr. DC and the whole team Adrian, how they. Um, tackle and how they take on ministry and reaching Miami and beyond is awesome. So mm -hmm. there's an alignment there with us. It's great. Miami's rocking it because same day, this is how Miami's crazy, right? We had the Divided and Conquer. We had some of our partners and churches and friends that we know down the street at another event, City to City, also a whole nother network of pastors growing mm -hmm. and leading, Vu rocking it with 500 plus pastors all over the nation. And the conversation was similar, right? On reaching, on growing, 
on the 10 million plus in, yeah. in, in the vicinity. How do you build a platform in which you can communicate in today's communication style? Like, mm-hmm. how do we actually like, how do you leverage something for good? And the difference, Justin, of, of, of the, the traditional come and see, which I think we've done some, some mostly done well, come and see, build it, build a steeple, boom, get the don't people. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Which is, oh, this week, best ever. Don't miss out. Come, come and see. As opposed to the commission of go and tell and that send out and what that digital marketing truly is. Start there, Justin. W- w- what is marketing? Why do we need marketing? Ha- does the church need marketing? Um, mm-hmm. And and debunk that because we had a lot of conversations and broke down some taboos that was really encouraging to see pastors who get it yeah. while down in Miami. But I wanted our listeners, you know, across the nation to, to, to get a glimpse of the conversations we had. Sure. I think, and I think this is a, pretty applicable for nonprofits and for-profit leaders to, to, to understand some of these principles too. Um, but, but to, to look at it from the lens of the church, you know, for me, these marketing, uh, principles were things like, uh, social media channels. You can do content marketing on social media and we already like, we're pretty much just content generation houses as churches. Right. And, True. and that's more or less where education, content generating houses, well, there's a full way in which that can happen and spread through the world very seamlessly. But oftentimes we put in, you know, let's just say you're you're uh, a good, healthy, like congregation that's been around for a while. And maybe they are running like a $2 million operating budget. And they, whatever their church size is, maybe it's a thousand people, maybe it's 500 people. Whatever that is, they're spending $2 million to serve those people in the community around them. For a small amount more, they could for like five percent more. Quick math on that, Colin. It would be yeah. It's about if you give or take carry the one. It's it's it's, it's, a, little, it's a little more than that. Yeah, he's yeah. Gonna, he's gonna post produce yeah. that answer. The answer is not <laughs> And we're back, right? So for like a hundred grand more, you could do things totally differently. If you were to do hire like a marketing person on staff to distribute what you do as a content house and as an educator, meaning that it costs us so much to bring people to come and see, to put a building over their heads and to get them to continue to come back and to participate and to pastor them and to keep the lights on and all that kind of stuff, right? There's this like baseline cost, but then there is another way in which communicating in which you can go and tell for like 5%, let's even just go crazier, 10% 10% more, you start distributing that same content. You could have twice as many people, three times as many people now being engaged because you you went and you told and you left. And so, you know, marketing is is the scientific side of communicating a with measurable, tangible. You know, I really I, I consider the marketing versus communication being a goal-driven and measurable objective for communications. And so this is where this gets really tricky because Mm. a lot of us who went to seminary, went to seminary before there was a thing called the internet Mm. and before we had cell phones. And a lot of people who went to seminary who are leading churches today were taught how to teach the Bible. They were taught how to read the Bible, how to understand the Bible, how to interpret the Bible. They were taught Greek. They were taught Hebrew. They were not taught how to code. They were not taught what Web 3 is or what Web 2.0 is or what Email 2.0 is. Those are just technology solutions in which we can communicate. And marketing is goal-oriented, measurable paths and systems in which we try to uh, communicate in a way in which is effective. And so if, if you're thinking like that, we've got the the idea down that there are opportunities for us to use these tools and technology to grow. I think there's a lot of churches in the early 2000s that that captured that with podcasting. So they started distributing their message on a free tool or a very low cost tool, you know, typically like a couple hundred dollars for for hosting podcasts and you can get thousands and thousands of downloads. Then some churches started to figure out how to utilize YouTube and some churches started to figure out how to distribute and broadcast on Facebook. So they were using the communication channels and the technology, and they were all comfortable with that because they were they were comfortable with that because they could give one staff member that work and say, take on a little bit of that work, our tech guy or our worship guy or 
communications g- girl or guy gets to do that work, and we're just going to keep doing the same thing we've always done. We're going to have people come in, but we'll now take that message that we did inside, and we're going to now distribute that out. Still not marketing. Mm-hmm. But it's super confusing because those people, most of the time, weren't actually trained in marketing. There's a When we hire a marketer, I think this is a good context. When we hire a marketer at, at Verse, we will usually get between 600 and 1,200 applications for a marketing role. We're not a super big agency. We are faith-based. We have, um, we've got some controversial clients, like a, like a secular marketer, um, maybe like, ah, I don't know if I want to work with churches or some of the, mm-hmm. some of the organizations we work with. Let's name them. Like Let's the go. pro-life, <laughs> okay. uh, like specifically the pro-life yeah, work yeah, that yeah. we do. Mm-hmm. Positive controversy. Yeah. But but in the marketing world, yes, we will still, even despite risk. all of that, we'll get you know six hundred to twelve hundred applicants in. I will test those people on what they actually understand from like marketing. Through we have kind of like a series of of steps in which filters people will take. We'll try to filter out people who don't really know what they're doing. We usually get that down to about twenty five people who actually know what they're doing meaning that they actually have done it, they have experience, not just they understand the concepts, mm. um, and they fully understand what it means to set a measurable goal, monitor that goal, deliver on that goal, make the adjustments adjustments necessary to maximize the efforts being spent to hit that goal. And that, like that work is, it takes some talent, it takes some time, it takes those, I mean, that takes a lot of work to develop that. When I first started and a lot of people first started i did things like ran um i ran like content on a, on facebook for for churches and it was like because we started doing this we would talk about like we 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 started with like come to church or here's like what we're doing at our church on facebook and then i would take it and i would go like that's not that important to people who don't go to this church right but we would, we would do like a video for an event that was for the community or what it really performed the best was was honestly always the missions work, like the outreach work. Mm-hmm. And people would, from the church, would share the outreach work because they were really proud that their church was actually doing outreach work. And the people from the community actually responded to that. Mm-hmm. And then I figured out like that work took me, let's just say that took me five hours, maybe 10 hours to get the video edited and everything. That work was the best content, but then, and and let's just say that the average employee make uh, is costs the church like twenty five bucks an hour, right? So it costs the church like two hundred and fifty dollars worth of resources to make that piece of content. What clicked for me was understanding that if I paid Facebook fifty dollars, I got ten times the reach. Mm. So now the church paid two fifty sunk cost two fifty to make the content and to put it up there. For three hundred dollars, instead of a hundred people engaging, we got a thousand engagements. That thing was not that hard. Yeah, that was not that hard. What we do today, comparative like to the landscape today, ten years ago, that was not that hard. And so, a lot of people who have communications jobs and a lot of people who have marketing jobs, they have sustained success because they did something that simple, mm-hmm. including myself. Yeah. The problem is, is that to stay relevant and to be working with bigger companies, to work with the with billion dollar brands, to work with hundred million dollar nonprofits, you can't get by with just what you did ten years ago. And honestly, we hardly can get ever get by with what we did last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. the the culture we have here is this culture of constant growth, of constant monitoring, of constant improvement, and iterative approaches to everything. Because that's what it takes to actually be good at this. And so when we talk about marketing, we talk about myths, there's just a lot of people who have good hearts. There's also a lot of people who know a lot about one piece. Mm -hmm. They may know a lot about content. They may have figured out how to do content marketing really well, but they don't understand how to do the ad buying. They may understand a lot about ad buying for a certain, like for a type of thing. We've worked with marketers who are awesome at product advertising. And using digital marketing and blogs and content generation for products that are under a hundred dollars, but they could not sell services that mm-hmm. are fifty thousand dollars services 
with any of the, the things that they figured out with that. And so we get these big pools of people who are like, I can do marketing, and they really, they really can only do a small piece yeah. of this. And churches, I think, have had those people in their congregations with good hearts, and they've said, pay me to do this, or let me spend some of the church's money to do these advertisements. Like, I'm doing this blog thing, I'm a popular this or that or whatever, or this has worked for me in the past years. And then the pastors are like, Oh, we tried that already. It didn't really work with that particular person. And so that's kind of the landscape we're sitting in right now is like there's very few people who have been as focused on a on a demo as we have with church work. And so the conversations are different, they're unique, um, and they're challenging to go, what is next and what should we be doing and how do we apply this goal-oriented, money-driven, results-checked, accountable Mm -hmm. communications Yeah, when we can heart, we're just like happy, you know, if our people show up and we can pull off Sunday. Um, so, you know, there's a big gap there. I love what you're saying, Justin. One, it's distribution is not enough, right? I think you got, you got eight year olds distributing stuff on YouTube Mm -hmm. like crazy. And so that strategy, that last and that actual, the marketing piece, I love it because it's evangelism. Right, but 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, where it's strategic evangelism. Mm-hmm. It's still doing the, what the church is called to do, but now it's trackable, measured. It's it, it's effective and efficient. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna flip it on you here real quick. Putting on my XP, my senior pastor hat, because I sat on that chair where I've got to sign the checks, I've got to manage the budget, and I'm like, yeah, but. I can't see or feel or touch that, Justin. That's pretty. It's cool. I'm happy that the content's getting out there. Yeah. But now you're telling me to pay Facebook for more? Mm-hmm. I don't want to give that guy. I don't want to give that platform. I don't want to pay that tool. And I've been on both sides, and that's a tough sell because I'd rather pay for somebody else to do more stuff over here next to me that I can see rather than do the extra 50 bucks. Or- you'd, you'd rather have like another employee... That's typically what I hear and typically the challenge. Mm-hmm. Or why not give this person a raise to just do more of the YouTube thing or to do more of the same thing they're doing. Because that's easier to see and verify. It's a the tangible. To, or are yeah. those people even real? Or what? It, so talk to me about those. Because we talk with pastors that that's continually the tension. Now, we have a guarantee. They've seen results. Our case studies and our track record speaks for itself, but it's still something they have to overcome. Mm-hmm. What What would you tell a pastor thinking that? It's like, dude, that's, I'm sure that's great. I mean, you know, I, there's, We'll leave it to Amazon and and Apple and mm-hmm. people selling to us. They're, they've got the millions and millions. We should only leave this technology to the growing organizations in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Basic, <laughs> which is so sad, right? Because we we experience it, we know it's effective, and but there's a, still a fear to embrace it and to yeah. make the jump or to take the risk. Well, I'm empathetic to the fear because I myself have failed plenty of times. Mm. And so most of these pastors, they're not fearful because they're scared of of doing of God doing a new thing or of doing something new, but because they've been burned. Mm-hmm. So I'm empathetic to the fear, um, which is what why I typically would say like the best relationships with us always start small. It's not a big bite. You don't have to bite off a big salary's worth of work to see the results. Uh, the biggest challenge is connecting the gap between what is working and why it's working when it comes to terms of affecting the actual ministry objectives. We uh, we were doing a discover with the church last week. It was the first time that the um, church came back and said, our goals that we want you to help us reverse engineer would not be just butts and seats, which typically it's like, that's really the thing because like any, anybody could kind of like come in and be like, I, I'm not as convinced that like online attendance is that big of a deal. Even though we know that's like kind of the first place most people will check your church out is they'll watch it online first. Um, so that's a leading indicator. We start to set goals like we'll, we'll do baseline measurements, year over year measurements because there's big, pretty big swings seasonally within churches. So like a month over month isn't going to tell us that valuable information. Mm -hmm. But if we can look at the last couple of years of data on your website, traffic, we also put in tools where we can watch people who come from ads and see what they do on your website. Well, you can do that. (laughs) Why would you do that? That's unethical. (laughs) It's not unethical. No, the Bible says, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but that's a, that's, 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 that's it, shalt not track pickles, it's creepy since I've entered this world. It's super creepy. Yeah. And the, it, but it's not, but it's not, but it is, right? but it's not. 
because I think we volunteer the information. Information's out there. The wrong people are buying it and using it for bad. Yeah. Yet, so so talk to me a little bit little about that because people don't know. I guess my my the point to answer your question is there is technology in place in which we can track the advertising and the work that we're doing with with marketing, whether that is an email that you're sending out to your congregation or to somebody who's interested in helping with a donation or a capital campaign. And most churches are stuck at 1.0 still when even with things as simple as email. Mm. Oh, right. We could do a whole episode on that, by the way. Right. Just sending out emails into thousands. It's not enough. So marketing, like good marketing would be to say sending email was the first thing. And most of us are like, we send out, I love this. Whenever I'm like, tell me about your email system when talking to a church, they're like, we do, we got a, we got somebody who's doing email blasts. I know it. We send out email blasts every week. Cause I delete it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, cool. What are the metrics on that? What is, what's I mean, that? What do you mean metrics? Uh, and they're typically like, we don't do They're like, we use we don't standard do here in America. We don't do that metric. <laughs> we don't do the metrics. <laughs> Europe. <laughs> I'm no. Metric. So we'll look at, we'll look at things like um, the open rate, right? But, Lots of times there's still bad data. Oh, so man. Google is actually sending you to junk. Uh, email, like you, your domain is actually getting deranked in mm. Google listings because you send out these e-blasts 1.0 style, which is just pray just out there and, and spray, spray, baby. <laughs> <laughs> which is such a waste because a staff member will get discouraged or feel like they're doing the work of the Lord, and right. we sent it to 50,000 people mm-hmm. without knowing that no one opened it, nobody clicked it, nobody got the information. You're hurting your church. Well, it was, was 5,000 people in your area. It was 5,000 people up in Canada. It yes. was 5,000 people out, in, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Well, Justin, speak to this, because this was part of the conversation, and we can do episodes and episodes of this, mm-hmm. and this is going to be a little bit of the secret sauce. And by the way, when he says discovery roadmap, and for those who don't know, part of the process, the strategic process for Verse and how we engage with our partners and why we've seen the retention and the success rate we've seen over the last decade is starting with that strategy. So it's typically four to five sessions, two hours of pop with our teams, reverse engineering, discovering, understanding the goals, the vision, mission, and, and reverse engineering the goals and what you want to achieve. So when he says discovery, and Verse thrives in doing those, we do them monthly with partners virtually all around and in person. Um, so that's what that is. When he says discovery, it's not just a 10-minute discovery call and uh, I'm trying to sell you some widget. It's not that. Did I say discovery? You did that. And now it's 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 set in. It's set in. Um, but it, that's what that is. It's us discovering the goals and then working backwards to really see how we can help you. It's not a one size fits all. However, the tools are um, interchangeable, and that's the beauty that we can challenge. But I do want to talk about the myths with Google Ads because most churches we talk to, oh yeah, I paid somebody over there four hundred bucks a month, and they man they got me the Google grant, and they managed it, and we tried it for a year, and they saw Nothing. squat. So they, they feel- went to a conference and they're like, I heard Google's giving out ten thousand exactly. dollars a month in AdWords. Why would I pay? For any why, ads, why would at it be all? for ads? Yeah, why? it should be free. For Google, yeah, yep. they'll try it. They'll throw money at somebody, solopreneur or a small agency, just doing that, or even a big agency, or even a big, yeah. a lot of big agencies. Just oh, we'll get you in the door and get it that. And talked about the experience because I even challenged. I remember early on, and and why not? Why is that money not being channeled like it should? What's your experience with that, and what should pastors and leaders know? All right, the first thing to know about the Google Grant is it is. A strategic part of Google's business model in which to do tax write-offs, right? And so they don't want the, a tax write-off part of their business model to cannibalize the profitable part of the business model. Mm-hmm. Google's ad platform runs off of the basis in which it is the most desirable keywords are paid for. The more desirable they are, the um, more bidding competition. T- typically, and- the more desirable they are, the more they cost, right? So. If there is 10,000 people who search church near me, Google wants you to pay for that if you want to show up first when somebody searches church near me, right? It's important for them to know it's an actual bid and auction. These prices are set based on interest, based on region. They change from month to month. They change. So church near me is not going to be the same in Alaska than it is Miami or in South Africa. And based on seasons, based on population, all all of the above. So it's a bidding when you talk. It's not a, oh, it's $1.00. Period across, it's it bit it fluctuates. Go ahead. But I've been doing this for ten years. I've never sat down and talked to any church who did not. When I say like, hey, how do you how do new people find you? What do they do? Like, talk me through 
how somebody new walked into, into your church, nobody has said anything other than they got invited by a friend. But if there's any technology, nobody has said anything more than they went and they Googled church near me or a church or looked for a church on Google. So there's a few phrases that are pretty universal around the country that Google wants you to pay for. Those, those in most cities, those are running a couple bucks. So here's the deal with the grant. The grant will give you words like up to a dollar fifty two dollars. Words that are not valuable. They're not going to be three, four, five, ten dollar words. The reason why people are willing to pay that much for those words is because if I can get Eridus to find my church first and he likes what he sees when he clicks on the church, he's likely to show up. Hmm. If I wanted Eridus and his family and he fits the demographic of the people I want, it's certainly worth ten dollars to get Eridus's attention. And and the way that the metrics typically look is like I'm gonna see a hundred a hundred people I wanna show that ad, and maybe out of a hundred, five to ten. On, in a good case with a church that has a good reputation, reputation I might get 12, 15, 20. As clicks. As, that's, so that's like the click-through rate is the percentage out of 100. The CTR. Uh, is going to be like, this is how basically good that ad was presented to the audience that it was shown to. Not to lose our listeners here. So, but the Google, but okay, but Google's giving me $10,000. I can use all that right, money so they're for only all giving that. You, no, they're only giving you the words that are least right. expensive, like under $2, that so, are not the high value words that don't convert. Right. So someone who doesn't know anything about this, they see $10,000 and Correct. say, oh, cool, $10,000. Right. But they don't see the pool of what they can actually buy with that. So what do they do from there? Or how do we come in and help? It's Yeah, it's almost like when you're a kid and you go shopping for you know Christmas presents, and you're like, I want to buy my dad a grill because I know my dad needs a new grill. And your and you know your grandparents give you like a couple bucks, or you saved up that like ten dollars, and you're trying to shop, and you end up at the dollar store, and all you could really afford is like yeah. that like crappy grill uh, spatula. spatula that you still get burned when you use it because like it's only ten inches long. Yeah. That's kind of like shopping with the Google Grand <laughs> <laughs> for Christmas yeah. for your dad. Gram- Grandma Google <laughs> has given you this money, but they, you said you can only shop here. It's like that. It's like you're just picking up the scraps of AdWords. It's right. actually super tough to use the Google Grant. There's very few agencies that use it for all $10,000. They they will set it up. They will try to get it so that it gets as much traffic to your site. Here's the bigger problem, though. If your agency is trying to get to spend all the $10,000 because they're like, they want you to feel like they're doing a good job spending the Google grant, meaning like they they did a good job, they set it up, and they want you to see all the traffic going to your site, but it's the wrong traffic. Mm -hmm. It's bad traffic. Like they literally put words in there that are not even for the right people that should be coming to your church. Then Google looks at your website and all that traffic because people, what they do is they go on and then they leave when the second they see like, this is not what I was looking for, Right. So what happens to your website organically? It goes down. Bye. The rankings continue to go down because it's clickbait. They're bouncing. So your bounce rate goes up the more that that agency sends the wrong people to your site. So then Google, whose job is to find the right thing for people and match them as fast to the right thing or else they go, I'm going to look for a different search engine. Mm-hmm. They go, well, I'm not going to show that site again to these people. I'm not going to show the site again to these people. And slowly but surely, we come in, we'll see churches who are like, yeah, we've been doing Google ads for like three or four years. And I'm like, yeah, you guys aren't showing up anywhere. Yeah. And you're a big church. Like, I, I should be able to find you locally, if nothing else. They're like, they've got a bunch of reviews. They got a bunch of, of people who come to their church every week that, that go to their church website. Google should be rewarding you for that. But you've got somebody over here who's motivated by the wrong thing which is just to spend that Google grant and has just blown up your bounce rate. When you look at the actual analytics, when you dig the deeper level than just the surface vanity metrics, you start to realize a lot of churches are just getting burnt by people who are, and, and let's be honest, like $400, most good marketers are worth two, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars an hour. Seriously. Like, yeah, you're saying the, they're the, worth it. So you're paying somebody 400 bucks a month. A month. You're to not going to get. You're either getting somebody who's not worth very much if they're willing to give like ten, spend 10 hours working on that at 400 or most of the time what you're getting is you're getting like a cut 20 and, minutes. Cut and paste, cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feel good. One or the other. Either way, it's yeah. not good. Yeah. And Justin, 
because I, I do want to get to the the bounce rates, by the way, if, if that's somebody jumping on your site and literally rolling their eyes because now they're mad at in your site. So the brand impression there is actually negative because mm-hmm. they're like, ah, not this, bye. They drop out in a second. Your site just keeps going to the back of the list, right? Mm-hmm. Your, your, your brand. We've seen it work in a different way, though. So it's not that the Google grant is all bad or it's all takes work, takes strategy. It takes, you know, tinkering with and figuring out the keywords. It's not all bad. Right. It's not all bad. So just no, because there's we are, one, and there's we get one churches, really cool strategy we figured out. We, talk, we did like a year or two of like we couldn't spend it. Uh, we couldn't spend the grant. We couldn't figure out how to use it. If we can get enough traffic, if you can pay to play, you can get the right, get good words going. You get, start clim- climbing the rankings. This is my, my free tip. Yeah. Uh, and, this, and we, a lot of churches that jump on this find incredible results. And this is kind of the kind of work we, and it's like, let's share it. Cause I think it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's important. So first of all, like we'll take all the low hanging fruit we can get that are right, which are going to be like the key phrases that have your church's name in it. Those are not very expensive words. You should be paying for those words just making sure that if someone actually was looking for you, you're, sh- you're going to show up and not somebody else who looks or sounds like you. So that's the first little free tip is like use the Google grant for the, for the stuff that's got your name in it and all of the stuff, your youth group's name. You've got that cool, funny name for your youth group, whatever it is, uh, put, throw that stuff in there too. Like, so buy those words because when that mom or, or dad is actually looking for you for that youth group name, you should show up on that. The second thing is when you have enough good traffic come to the site, there is retargeting. So Google is not just AdWords. This grant you can also use in Google Display. Google Display is typically not nearly as effective as an AdWord because it's being displayed out on websites that may or may not be for your particular audience. But you can put it in the right zip codes. And then ultimately, if you can get a certain number of people to your site, you can turn on a retargeting campaign. Retargeting is not that expensive and you can spend the Google grant on retargeting, which means when people come to your site, they will see your messaging in a display ad, not a search Correct. keyword a, a ad. A little banner, a little box, a little square, box, square, a little there's sort of graphics. On the sites. Yeah, yeah. Typically you put, you know, we will load up a bunch of display ads that are, that are um, going to be intended for somebody who's already been to your site. So the messaging even in that is now not like you'd never heard of us before, but it's like, I'm trying to get you to, to actually show up to church now yeah. because you did check us out at some point. And so those display ads will follow people around. This this is the kind of annoying ad when, I, when you've already bought that pair of shoes and you still keep getting targeted for it. Um, they're not that expensive to, to run those across the internet and to run those across all of your phone apps. And the Google Display program it's a pretty big media program, which is pretty diverse, and there's a lot of placement for that. Um, but that's the way that you can spend the ad grant um, uh, from Google, and those are those would be the, like the two two tips. Is there are valuable cheap words that you should get, even though I I wouldn't say that like if I was to run an ad thing for you, that those are the words that are like generating new people, because those are like people who already want it. Um, but that is the by far. Uh, that retargeting side of it, like you put those things together, you get some of the thousand dollars worth of free words that are good words, get the retargeting going, uh, and you add on like a few thousand dollars of like really good uh, ad words to that thing, and you've got a super powerful. And I would say, uh, like when we were looking at churches, I'd say probably about a one percent ish of the churches are doing a good job with with that particular program. Mm. Well, like we said, all of that value was for free right there. So, uh, so you're Wait, welcome. We're not charging for this uh, podcast, no, well, <laughs> dude. No, maybe we, maybe we should. Have you learned nothing? <laughs> no, I love it. Listen, um, no, I love. I should love, really I, get our media team and the ad buying and the marketing director rather than me. But no, it's fun, but it's fun to at least like no, boss no, the cops Listen, Justin, and I know we've known each other for a few years now, but the, the team we've hired, the folks with the experience and the access they've had to massive accounts is incredible because yeah. we've gotten to tap into that. It's been eye-opening for me who's been like, just put it on the billboard or just make more shirts. And listen, there's some value to that. Mm-hmm. But that alone is spray, right? What is it? Pray and spray? Spray and bay and, and, and hopefully. Spray it everywhere. Yeah, and, so, and pray. it feels good because it's an ego. It's a pat on the back. To my peers, they're like, did you see my picture over there on that thing? Did you get my mailer? Yeah, amongst all the other trash I trashed, the trackability, the mo- next gen especially, which native apps, native tools, native software, native networks, it's the language. Mm. 
It's the language. And it, and you can target and you can be specific and not just spray. We're going to wrap this one because there's so much more. I do want to talk about yeah. so much more. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll do part we, two, man. We got to do part two on this. Is that all right? Yeah, we can do a part two on this. We also we also got uh, branding. We're going to talk about branding coming up. Ooh. And and that's going to be a super fun one as well. So, branding. Branding. Oh, not said, Brandon. No, uh, no. They said Brandy the drink. Oh, uh, that's, Sorry, our, that's, that's another, our other podcast. That you have another side podcast. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, we do pay for that one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but yeah, we uh, keep keep an eye out. We got some some good stuff coming up. Justin, thank you for all of that insight. Uh, if you want to know more, versecreative.com will help you out. But thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time on the Nonprofit Renaissance. Thanks again for listening to the Nonprofit Renaissance. We hope it ignites a renaissance in you and helps you go further and grow faster. Be sure to share, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to recommend or be a guest on our show, send us an email at podcast at versecreative.com.